Week 28. Day 190, on being specific about your resolutions. Instead of saying I'm never going to cheat again, say, today, I'm not going to do that thing that makes me feel weak and shameful about myself again. Neil Strauss. When setting a new resolution, be specific about it, and particularly about the way a certain behavior you want to give up makes you feel. For example, saying I'm not going to eat pizza anymore isn't going to be as visceral as saying I'm not going to eat that thing that makes me bloated, obese, and tired anymore. The former is a weak, non-emotional statement, the latter is a strong resolution that reminds you about the reason why you want to stop engaging in a given activity. This strategy works the other way, too. Instead of saying I'm going to write 1,000 words a day, say I'm going to write 1,000 words a day, the activity that makes me feel so energized, creative, and hopeful about the future in which I'm a best-selling author. A more specific, emotionally charged resolution will stick in your mind better, and that will help you keep going or pause and think before breaking a resolution. Day 191, on Feudal Determination If any man is able to convince me and show me that I do not think or act right, I will gladly change, for I seek the truth by which no man was ever injured. But he is injured who abides in his error and ignorance. Marcus Aurelius Determination can change your life, but it can also lead to a lot of wasted time if you stubbornly keep going when everyone around you who's knowledgeable about the goal you want to reach tells you that you're following the wrong path. Obviously, if the only people who are trying to convince you that you're wrong have no idea about what you're doing, you can safely ignore their advice. If, however, people who have reached the goals you're striving to achieve are trying to correct your ways, heed their advice. I sometimes offer advice to new entrepreneurs who have big dreams, but the word realistic doesn't seem to be a part of their dictionary. I tell them to listen to the experts, get their feet wet with a simple business model and slowly build real-world experience. Unfortunately, many of them ignore this advice only to return months or years later, this time with more humility and a desire to apply their immense desire and determination in a way that it can actually lead to results. Don't get me wrong, I'm all for bold undertakings, but often what those entrepreneurs do is waste time and energy, investing their vast reserves of determination into a project that was doomed to fail from the get-go because they had no real-world business experience to make it succeed. I know how it works, because I was such a person, too. The first time I read The Millionaire Fast Lane by MJ DeMarco, a book that eventually changed my life. I didn't heed the author's advice about not pursuing money-making schemes. I thought I knew better, and foolishly stuck to SEO, search engine optimization, and affiliate marketing. I had to suffer from several more failures before I was ready to listen to people who were more experienced than I was. If you want to save yourself from unnecessary failures, be open to feedback from people who have achieved the goals you'd like to reach. Don't abide in error and ignorance. Digging for gold like a madman where hundreds of people had dug before you and didn't find anything. Day 192, on being in it for the long term. Tests compared new musicians who saw themselves as in it for the long term, versus just trying it. With the same amount of practice, the long-term commitment group outperformed the short-term commitment group by 400%. The long-term commitment group, with a mere 20 minutes of weekly practice, progressed faster than the short-termers who practiced for an hour and a half. When long-term commitment combined with high levels of practice, skills skyrocketed. Daniel Coyle There's something about long-term commitment that makes it immensely more powerful than doing something once-off, even when the amount of time spent practicing is the same in both cases. What matters is not putting in the same number of hours every now and then, but putting in time consistently even if it's a small amount of time. In other words, the winning strategy is that of a marathoner, running long distances slowly, and not that of a sprinter, running short distances quickly. For example, as a writer, I currently follow a routine of writing at least 1,000 words a day. 
I wouldn't be able to do my best work by not having a schedule and writing in a random fashion instead. It's the everyday habit that keeps my writing sharp, and whenever I take a longer break from writing, I need at least several days to get back into the groove. Consequently, I make sure that even if I can't write 1000 words for some reason, I at least write something. Are your goals designed in such a way that you're working on them regularly or are you doing them from time to time, in an erratic fashion? How can you develop a system that will ensure that each day or each week you practice for a set period of time? Day 193, On Becoming a New Person If you want to be a new man you have to stay in new places, and do new things, with people who never knew you before. If you go back to the same old ways, what else can you be but the same old person? Joe Abercrombie Changing yourself doesn't necessarily mean throwing away your old life, cutting ties with your family and friends and moving to another corner of the world. If, however, certain aspects of your old life clearly hold you back, it is necessary to replace them with something new to enable your identity to change. If, for example, your primary way of spending time is going to nightclubs and partying, don't expect to become highly productive until you get rid of that habit and embrace a new, less exciting, lifestyle. Some of your friends will probably resent you for it, but if they're against you doing what you need to do for your personal growth, are they truly your friends? Likewise, pursuing important long-term goals often means becoming a part of a new community, visiting places you've never been to before, and embracing habits that you've never thought about. It's understandable to feel some resistance toward destroying your old ways and replacing them with something new, but ultimately it's how you become a new person. For example, I was apprehensive about terminating my bodybuilding workout regimen and switching to an entirely different, bodyweight based approach to exercise. I had to follow new experts, perform new exercises, and train in a different environment. There's no way around it. If you want something new in your life, something old has to go, no matter how sentimental you are about it or how scared you are that the new thing might not work well for you. Day 194, On Pain and Quitting Pain is temporary. Quitting lasts forever. Lance Armstrong Pain, particularly during strenuous exercise, is often so overpowering that you can barely think straight. However, it's through this pain that we grow, and it's a necessary part of the process, just like embracing discomfort in general is essential for rejecting instant gratification in order to accomplish your long-term goals. Whenever you feel tempted to give up because of momentary pain, do your best to remind yourself that pain passes, but the disappointment you'll feel upon quitting will accompany you for a long time. Giving up will give you some relief right now but the price you'll have to pay will be ultimately more painful than bearing the pain a little while longer. If you think that there's no way you can handle the pain, something that will probably happen to you during the first several weeks of exercising, for example, tell yourself to only bear it for 3 seconds longer and then give up. Often, pain is a fleeting high-intensity burst at the moment you first feel it, and then it quickly recedes as your body adapts to it something I experienced in numerous workouts, as well as when I took cold showers. Waiting for 3 seconds before you give up can be enough time to enable you to withstand the pain and keep going. As a quick disclaimer, please don't mistake the kind of pain that's safe, signaling you're pushing yourself, with the kind of pain that's the signal of an injury. Whenever you are pushing your limits, always prioritize safety over everything else. Day 195, On Procrastination as Your Ally If I defer writing a section, it must be eliminated. This is simple ethics, why should I try to fool people by writing about a subject for which I feel no natural drive? Nassim Taleb People consider procrastination an enemy and seek ways to eliminate it from their life. What if I told you that procrastination can be actually one of your greatest allies? In essence, when you're putting something off, it's because you don't care about it enough to take action now. If there's no natural drive to get it done, then it means you're forcing yourself into doing something that isn't right for you. Perhaps it's the wrong action or you're thinking about it in the wrong way. 
Regardless, in both of those circumstances, procrastination tells you that you're lacking the right motivation. If you woke up in the early morning in a burning house, would you put off getting up for later? Likewise, if you care deep down about building a business, would you procrastinate about doing the necessary work? Playing video games instead of working would be a clear signal that you've yet to uncover a strong enough reason to give up gaming in favor of doing something more productive. The next time you catch yourself delaying action, reassess your motivators. If you're constantly putting it off, your chances of success are slim. Discover better reasons why, or give up and do something else that won't result in constant procrastination. Day 196 on impermanent motivation. Of course motivation is not permanent. But then, neither is bathing. But it is something you should do on a regular basis. Zig Ziglar. Don't assume that if you're motivated now, you'll be motivated forever. And if the motivation is gone, it's time to give up on your goals. You should draw your motivation from your personal reasons why such as your desire to build a successful business to offer your family the best of what life has to offer, but you'll have to periodically do some spring cleaning and revise your motivators. Resist the temptation to give up just because you temporarily lack motivation. Instead of treating it as an excuse to discontinue your efforts, come up with practical solutions that will recharge your motivation. Just like you need to wash your body regularly to keep it clean, you need to regularly take care of your motivation. Replenish it whenever it drops and always look for new ways to strengthen it. I strongly suggest creating a document in which you're going to put anything that fires you up. For example, I save articles I find inspirational, jot down songs I find motivating, and download images that inspire me. Whenever I feel under the weather, I can access my inspiration bank and lift my spirits.